Iran and Saudi Arabia, two regional powerhouses in West Asia with a history steeped in rivalry, religious divides and geopolitical standoffs, are now discussing ways to enhance defense and military cooperation. The two nations, who for decades have been adversaries, even backing opposing factions in regional wars, are reportedly taking steps towards military cooperation. As per reports in a rare meeting in Tehran on Sunday, the chief of staff of both countries, Iran's Major General Mohammad Bagheri, sat down with Saudi Arabia's Lieutenant General Fayyad bin Hamad al Rawaili. According to a report in Al Jazeera, the development of defense diplomacy and the expansion of bilateral cooperation were among the main topics of this meeting. And following the meeting, Iran's chief of staff reportedly, quote unquote, welcomed the participation of the Saudi Arabian Navy in next year's Iranian naval exercise, either as observers or by sending naval units. The two generals have also discussed a range of issues like improving cooperation in defense and sharing insights, experiences and resources in education and sports. al Ruali, the Saudi chief of staff, reportedly seconded these discussions, stating that the framework for collaboration between the countries has a strategic foundation. Reportedly highlighting the influence of the Beijing Agreement, a diplomatic breakthrough that was brokered by China in 2023 that restored diplomatic ties between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The latest development, remember, comes less than a month since Iran and Saudi Arabia held joint naval exercise in the Sea of Oman along with other countries. So what does all of this mean? You see, as recently as a year ago, Saudi Arabia and Iran stood on opposite sides of nearly every regional issue. Saudi Arabia reportedly led a coalition against the Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen and Iran was blamed for alleged attacks on Saudi oil facilities. But gradually there's been a pivot in foreign policy and a broader desire for regional stability and a newfound willingness to engage directly. According to experts, this shift is not just about symbolism. It's about pragmatism. For Saudi Arabia, stability, it's now a core priority as it embarks on an ambitious economic transformation plan, seeking to diversify beyond oil. With the volatility that conflict brings, it's clear Riyadh is trying to cement its vision of a peaceful, economically prosperous kingdom. Adding that this goal cannot be achieved without some form of understanding with Tehran. Meanwhile, experts said that Iran is likely keen to stabilize its own region to avoid draining resources on conflicts. Furthermore, Tehran wants to assert its regional influence without resorting to aggression, presenting itself as a stabilizing force instead of a disruptive one. Now, experts say that this partnership for Iran could mean fewer threats from its long-time adversary and a chance to refocus on its domestic issues. It's also important to see this development in its entirety. You see, Saudi Arabia and Iran's relationship was not only complex, just politically, but also due to religious differences. Saudi Arabia saw itself as the leader of Sunni Islam, while Iran positioned itself as a Shiite stronghold. Reportedly, the 1979 Iranian Revolution set the two on separate paths, with each vying for influence in West Asia. This religious division reportedly also fueled sectarian tensions, particularly in regions like Lebanon, Iraq, Bahrain. So the question remains, will both the countries be willing to overlook these religious divides? Or is this just a fleeting attempt at diplomacy, hindered by deep-rooted differences that prove too difficult to reconcile? Because this cooperation could perhaps lead to a domino effect in West Asian diplomacy perhaps encouraging other rivals to reassess their relationships. As it stands, both nations stand to gain immensely from peace and cooperation. But history tells us that peace in West Asia, just like most parts of the world, is never a matter of certainty.